I'm showing you how to download Liquid Bounce for 1.12.2. Unlike the latest versions of Liquid Bounce, you do actually need Forge for 1.12.2 installed to be able to use it. So if you don't have that yet or you're not sure how to get it, I will link it down in the description below. Anyways, you can find an archive of the Liquid Bounce mod for 1.12.2 over on Forge. I will link this page down in the description. Anyways, here um, you'll probably get redirected to right here and you just want to click on this download button right over there. There's only one version, so it's quite simple which one you want to download. It'll uh, show you a video real quick and the download will start automatically. Now as you see my downloads over here, we have the Liquid Bounce Jar, which is great. Now we want to navigate over to the Mods folder. If you have a shortcut for it, then follow that. If you don't, press Windows and R at the same time. Type in a percentage sign, App Data, and then another percentage sign, just like so. You can hit Enter or click on OK, and that should either open up this folder or the App Data folder. Either way, you want to make sure that you're in the folder called Roaming over here. Then you want to locate the folder called .minecraft, you want to scroll down a little and find the folder called mods. Great! Inside of this folder we can simply drag liquid bounce for 1.12.2 right there. Once we've done that, we can close up both of these and we can open up the Minecraft launcher. Also a quick tip, if you plan on doing stuff like this more often, you can right click on this and then in my case show more options and I get the option to create a shortcut. You can for example place this on your desktop for easy access if you wish to do so. Anyways, here in the Minecraft launcher we want to make sure we have Forge for 1.12.2 selected and we'll click on play. Here on the Liquid Bounce home screen, we um, do have a few custom things already. We have the background button where you can, as you can see, customize the background through that button as well. And we also have the alt manager, which basically allows you to create and manage um, potential alt accounts you use for, for example, bypassing bans. Anyways, um, look into this if you do wish to do so. However, that's not what I'm going to be covering today. I'm just going to be heading into, in this case, a single player world, and I'll show you guys exactly how you can use it. So here in Minecraft, you'll notice a few things already. In the top left, we have the logo as well as the tab GUI. And right over here, we have, I believe, what is kind of a movement diagram. Anyways, you can navigate the tab GUI with your arrow keys, as you can see. However, I don't really recommend that. What I actually recommend more is pressing right shift, and that's going to allow you to open up this menu over here. Known as the click GUI, um, it's basically a large menu that also at the same time stops your game, right, and allows you to really look at everything in a lot more detail. Here, as you can see, these are all the things we have. Um, you can right click on these and that'll collapse them just like so. So here in the click GUI, you'll notice that a few things are automatically enabled and it's all kind of large. Um, anyways, some of these, well, these are basically all the utilities. You can click on them to turn them on, click on them once again to turn them off. If I drag this over here, as you can see, you can right click on these things with one of these arrows next to it and that'll give you a little bit of a customization menu. Some of these have more customization as you can see some of them less. That was a pretty good example right there. I got lucky. Those should all be pretty self-explanatory as well as the fact that they do actually give you a description if you hover over them. Anyways, if I move this bit to the side, you'll see that we have an editor button over here. This allows us to edit what we display on our screen over here. So we have the speed graph we saw earlier. It's uh, enabled by default. I can just click on delete after I've selected it. Um, we have an array list over here. This displays everything that um, well, this displays all the utilities that you have enabled. Anyways, I don't want this on my screen, so I can also remove that. Maybe I want to remove the logo and the tab GUI as well, because I just want a clean screen. Well, now I have that. Anyways, for the rest here, you can, of course, also add things. Um, as you can see, they are listed over here, as well as you're able to click on Create Element, and you'll get a bunch more things that you can add on your screen. Some people like these, some people don't. Anyways, um, heading back just to normal Minecraft over here, this client does also have a second function apart from just the click GUI, which is commands. Open, um, opening up the chat over here, I can type in dot help. 
just like so. Basically, dot is the command prefix for liquid bounce. Just like in regular Minecraft, you would use slash. For liquid bounce commands, we use the dot. So I can type in dot help, and as you can see, I'll get a list of, well, there's 17 pages. Wow, I've never had a client with that many pages. Um, anyways, it's basically going to list all the commands that it has, um, and say you find the command you want. For example, auto armor. Hmm, but I'm not sure how to use it. I can... Is it reading my mind? What? Oh my god, I think the Chinese are listening to me. Anyways, I can type in just the command like that right there. I'm not sure what this is, but here from Liquid Bounce, as you can see, we get the syntax. So I can type in dot auto armor, then the minimum delay, maximum delay. But now in theory, I know how to use it. Now one of the most important commands is going to be dot bind. As you can see, I can type this in chat right here and it gives me the syntax. So dot bind the module and then the key or just dot bind the module and then none. Basically this first usage, um, I'll show you how it works right here. What module do we want? Let's select air jump. Then I can type in dot bind air jump there we are, and then what key, maybe I want to bind it to J, right? I can hit on enter, and now the module air jump is bound to J, which means that I can click on it, and that's going to enable air jump. As you can see, I'm pretty sure this isn't supposed to happen. Anyways, um, we can disable it once again by simply clicking on our key bind again. You'll also see that every time I click on J, it's actually accidentally being bound to two things. So, what's it being bound to? Air jump and liquid walk. Well, I can now type in, for example, dot bind liquid walk. There we go. That's the one I bound incorrectly or something. And then none. There we are, and now it's been unbound, which means that we only have air jump bound to J now. Anyways, that's basically how to use that command. I think it's the most important one. Let me know your favorite command down in the comments, and of course, if you have any more questions or stuff like that, then do feel free to let me know down there as well. Anyways, for right now, thank you ever so much for watching, and I do hope to see you again in the next one. Bye-bye.